everybody! Today I wanted to talk to you about something that's really dear to my heart and that's dyspraxia. I think a lot of people don't really know what dyspraxia is. I didn't know what it was until I found out that I possibly had it and it sounds a lot like this calculus or dyslexia and stuff like that and I guess in some ways it's very similar but also very different. Dyspraxia is pretty complicated to explain. I'm still not the best at it but it's kind of like a quarter coordination disorder so it affects your motor and coordination skills but there are a lot of symptoms and if you have dyspraxia you won't have all of them like it's very different for everyone some people will have some other people have others um, I know a lot of people with dyspraxia and I've speak, spoken about it at length and we always have a lot of things that overlap and a lot of things that are different too. So dyspraxia can affect your motor skills, your balance and your spatial awareness. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, there are two ways that you can get it. One is from a child or I assume that you're born with it. I feel like I was probably born with dyspraxia and other times you can actually get it from having an accident or having a brain damage or something like that, like your coordination can become off. Some people have it quite mildly so it's hard to sometimes know that you have it and it's very hard to diagnose, um, particularly because it's just being medically clumsy. <laughs> like that's how I try to explain it to people, I'm medically clumsy. There's still a lot of research that needs to be done about dyspraxia. Um, the interesting thing is, is that it's very similar to ADHD and so people are often misdiagnosed with ADHD and like vice versa um, but often people with ADHD also have dyspraxia so these kind of conditions are somewhat related but not everyone who has ADHD has dyspraxia I think I, I probably do have ADHD, that's that thing that I haven't um, going to get diagnosed for yet, but I was diagnosed for dyspraxia. The interesting thing was how I got diagnosed. My dad was reading the newspaper and he read about Daniel Radcliffe and it explained that Daniel Radcliffe has dyspraxia and exactly what it was. Like for example, he wasn't able to tie his shoelaces when he was a child and he was very unbalanced and blah 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 blah. And my dad read all of these things and he thought it sounded a lot like me. So we went to the GP and we had like, I won't say tests because it's, it's not like something they can like, like properly like blood test you for but they'll just ask you lots and lots of questions and then maybe like check your balance and stuff like that and do some like like psychological tests I don't know how to explain it but then um they'll be like yeah you probably have it but yeah I want to explain about growing up with dyspraxia and how frustrating it was for me so I was happy that my dad helped me with this because my dad wasn't very good at dealing with dyspraxia mainly because my parents were quite old so for him, he often said that like when he was a kid, stuff like ADHD didn't exist because kids were like properly disciplined. So I guess one of the first things that I struggled to do was do my shoelaces. Honestly, I just gave up and I just had like Velcro shoes because I was so bad at tying my shoelaces. Honestly, I was probably like, I don't know, like, <laughs> like 11 before I could probably tie my shoelaces and I'm still not great at it. So that was one of the first things. And I remember it was so frustrating because he would keep yelling at me to do it, but I just couldn't. Like, And it looks so easy and I'm not sure how to explain it to you. Like, I just physically can't. And the more you pressure someone to do something, the more um, I was frustrated they get. So a lot of the things that I struggle with with dyspraxia, if someone puts pressure on me to do it, it just becomes almost impossible. Another thing that I noticed is like telling the time on the big clock. Um, I couldn't do it when I was a kid, just couldn't. And it was weird because sometimes I could, and then other times I couldn't. And then if someone put pressure on me or made fun of me, it was just impossible. Like I had just become blind to it. But I didn't have this calculus. So yeah, that's another uh, symptom of having dyspraxia. And other people I spoke to, they also said they struggled with like telling the time on like the big one. I can do it now, but like it also like sometimes I just I just can't <laughs> I have to like really focus which is honestly embarrassing and the thing is is like a lot of these things um, to do with coordination and your motor skills 
are embarrassing and they are um, equated with childishness. If you know, like you're unable to do things that a child can do, and people will say that to you often. So it honestly, it is really, really embarrassing. A lot of people with dyspraxia as well, um, like struggle eating, and I'm not too bad with that, but I do. I do have a little bit of a complex, like I will get sauce on my shirt and stuff like that so like I do have a little bit of a complex about that I realise particularly when I'm out eating with people The spatial awareness thing probably gets me the most I'll bump into a lot of items in my house, I'll bump into tables, I'll bump into people and uh, I think a quite common thing is when you're walking with someone and you're talking to them and you'll kind of veer into them and bump into them and <laughs> I've had so many like instances of this where people will get genuinely mad at me like even though I'm not like bumping them really really hard if I'm a little bit too close to them when I'm talking to them um, people will genuinely like actually shout at me for this and I'm really really apologetic like I'm like I'm really really sorry I didn't realize but it's really really annoying to have to explain that you you really can't help it because for someone who doesn't have dyspraxia it's just really easy to not do that but for someone who does have dyspraxia you constantly have to pay more attention to your surroundings because otherwise you will bump into stuff which is honestly exhausting another thing is like how much power I use to do stuff and um, this happens sometimes when I'm like opening doors like cupboards I'll sometimes just rip it off its hinges, like completely just tear it off without realising and other times it'll be really hard for me to open something and so yeah that's a, something that's really really annoying is my body doesn't always um, equate for distance and power. The same thing is with your voice, um, another symptom that people can have is when you're talking sometimes you're not aware of how loud you're talking so you can talk very loudly or sometimes just like some parts of what you're saying are quite loud i try to really avoid um doing that but sometimes there'll be a time when i'm saying something to someone and i want to say a part quiet and a part loud and i'll flip them and then i'll say the the quiet part out loud and it'll be really really embarrassing so that's also something that can happen and something that can that's happened to me one of the most annoying and most common parts is direction and I think this is a way to possibly think maybe I do have dyspraxia if just directions are impossible for you like for me um, I really struggle with directions it's almost like like I feel like the magnets in my head are like switched like I'll be sure it's this way but it's actually this way and this happens to me quite a lot and uh, like there'll be times when I'll be going somewhere with someone and I've been there many times before and I'll like stop to check my google maps and like people will make fun of me and I think this is one of the things I've been made fun of a lot in my life is about directions and I'm always really apologetic and I'm like I'm really really sorry and it's really really embarrassing because you know like you should you've been there before like four times like how do you not know where it is but it's, it's just really really hard and the more you, particularly when people kind of make fun of me, it just becomes impossible, like my, my brain kind of shuts down. The biggest problem I had when I was a child is obviously like, it was really hard for me to learn how to ride a bicycle. I didn't learn how to ride a bicycle until I was like 28. Um, so that was a problem, tying my shoelaces was a problem, I was very very clumsy and so the th problem with these things is that it can be annoying for people and that's the one of the worst parts for me is that I always kind of feel like a burden and I guess that's where kind of like masking comes in I'm always masking and trying to overthink like think if I'm in the way or if I'm talking too loud and stuff like that which is kind of a good thing when you're living in Japan because those things are really really important but it's also very mentally exhausting, like I feel like I just get completely mentally exhausted particularly when I'm hanging out with a lot of people and my dad used to get really really annoyed with me um, when I was a kid because I couldn't do some of the things that other kids could do and until recently um, dyspraxia was considered a developmental like learning difficulty but it's really not, like it doesn't stop you from learning things but it does make you kind of frustrated so um, particularly because you academically you do as well as your peers so it's not like a learning difficulty so it's really hard for um 
your parents, particularly when I grew up in like the 90s, to think that there is something like wrong with your brain is more just like either you're stupid or you're lazy so that was really really hard and like I remember crying a lot and my dad getting really really angry and sometimes like particularly because he was older back in his day if someone wasn't doing something a kid wasn't doing something they should be doing you would hit them so sometimes my dad would hit me to try and like make me be able to do this thing which made it worse it made it harder for me to do it and it also gave me kind of like a lot of anxiety at performing that task and i remember like one of the things was like counting money and he would get so so angry with me because i suddenly like wouldn't be able to count because he would give me like these pop quizzes and that's the thing if it's something that happens like quite suddenly it's very very hard <laughs> And so like, and then he would shout at me would make it completely impossible. And the thing is, it's like, I know you can do this because you've done it before. And I would be crying and he'd be like, why can't you do this? And I would be crying and I'd be saying like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I know I can do this, but I don't know why I, I don't know why I can't do it now. And it wasn't until later when I discovered that I had dyspraxia and it really made things a lot clearer for me. And it made me, yeah, a lot easier on myself like because a lot of the time I was very angry at myself because I couldn't do those things but it just honestly just turned out that just my brain wasn't braining <laughs> but like as I got older and like moving to Japan of course because we're in such a tight space and there's lots of people I had to be a lot more aware which honestly did help me a lot um another thing is like even though I have like motor skill issues or like spatial awareness issues you shouldn't just be like, okay, I'm just bad at this stuff. It's not something that's completely curable, but there are ways you can train yourself to get better. So one thing I did is I started to play the lyre, which is like a little harp. Um, I did some like finger exercises and honestly, I just tried really hard to be more aware. I'm not like, I'd still bump into stuff and I'm still really clumsy, but I'm every day trying and I feel like I am getting better at just not bumping into stuff all the time, which is a good thing. The annoying thing is though, is because like dyspraxia isn't very well known, I don't like talking to people about any medical condition or anything ever because whenever I've said I've had something wrong with me, people, for some reason, whenever anyone hears, they'll try to like disprove you or they'll assume that you don't and then you have to play like these question games, you have to talk about like your diagnosis and it's really, really annoying. So. Sometimes I don't want to tell people and the people that I have told um, Still will get frustrated with me and be like, why can't you find this or why can't you do this? I'm like, oh, I told you before that I have dyspraxia and they're like, okay And then five minutes later, they're like, why can't you do it? I'm like, well, I have dyspraxia I'm really, <laughs> Like I'm trying my best. So like on the one hand, honestly um, Talking about it didn't really help because people don't really know and I think it's just generally hard to know what it's like unless you have it. One of my worst memories um, when I was older and I moved to Japan is I remember we went to like this cafe in Harajuku, like for lolitas. And I was having tea and a sandwich with my friend and this girl came in and her other friend. And I don't, I don't really like vibe with them. They're kind of like, I don't know, like the mean girl vibe they're, they are one of them still lives here but the other one doesn't so i don't really really like them anyway but they came and like plopped down next to us even though we didn't invite them and then uh they kept trying to speak to us and we were like speaking to them and being polite but then i remember i was eating this sandwich the sandwiches there are so good it's like roast chicken and salad but as i was eating a little piece of lettuce fell out of my sandwich and i remember um, one of the girls, she was like ridiculing me for like 10 minutes like how comes it you're you're this old and you still can't eat properly like aren't you embarrassed haha <laughs> like you're like a kindergartner oh my god blah 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 and like um, it was really really strange like she just kept going and going and even though I wasn't saying anything I just kind of like froze and then I just kind of like ate and then left it was really really awkward and awful Um, so yeah like I don't understand why people will just like like mention stuff like that to people or make fun of people like I, honestly I don't get it like even if there's not like a medical ex a reason for that just like just leave people alone yeah I think that's one of the hardest things is one is people can make fun of you because you're clumsy and that's like funny <laughs> and like sometimes it is funny like and sometimes I try to laugh at myself but other times it's like genuinely embarrassing 
and another is obviously people um, who don't think it's a real disorder or people who don't think that you have it so they're like well how do you know how did like blah 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 are you sure like maybe it's this maybe it's that and it's just like it's a really like awkward conversation <laughs> but honestly um funny i had it made a lot of things much clearer for me about when i was a child and like how some things uh were more difficult for me but i learned recently that they did a lot of studies and um children who were born prematurely or were really low weight when they were born they're more susceptible to having dyspraxia and i was very premature and i was very very underweight when i was born so maybe that has something to do with it i'm also 100 percent sure that my mom has had dyspraxia because she she was the most clumsy person i've ever met in my entire life like 100 percent sure she had it so maybe it's also hereditary so yeah, I wanted to make this video because a lot of people might have it and not know. So if you find yourself extraordinarily clumsy or like you find yourself unable to do things other people can do quite easily, maybe just look up and see if you have it. You might not, but it's like, it's worth just looking at the symptoms and seeing if any of those resonate with you. And yeah, if, you, if you're around someone and they're really clumsy, please just be nice to them. Like, I assure you, clumsy people are not doing it to specifically annoy you like they're not doing it on purpose just to make people angry like i promise you just just be nice to them so yeah if you have any questions about this vaccine you can ask me i'm not a medical professional i'm not really the person to ask but i'll answer any questions that i can about myself or like things i read on the internet there are a lot of good resources about this vaccine so i really recommend checking them out so yeah thank you for watching and as always please subscribe